Hello and welcome again to Pickle Up Gaming, where Empire and Sega still exist, and still around to this day. Today we'll be looking at the world's skinniest remake with the theoretical body of a famine victim. That's right, my little Prussian pog champs. It's Pokemon Let's Go. And once again, we will be taking a look for about the fourth time in Pokemon's history, we'll be taking another jaunt through the Kanto region, fifth counting the HeartGold Soul Silver remakes. So here, let's review Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu are remakes of Pokemon Yellow. For those who literally don't know anything about Pokemon, here is some context. The plot of this game is that you're a generic Pokemon trainer on his or her quest to become the champion by defeating the eight gyms and defeating the Elite Four and becoming the champion, and on the way helping to disband a criminal organization. In this game, it's known as Team Rocket. The original red and blue, and by extension yellow, has helped to create the template that literally every Pokemon game has followed ever since. The game itself has lovely HD graphics, and while most people complain about the grid-based level design or the plastic appearance of the Pokemon, at least as the latter is considered, I choke that up to be just part of the art style, and the former, well, it's a remake, what'd you expect? The sound is phenomenal, with a modernized remake of the original OST from Red and Blue. The game also has tight, well-designed controls, however there is just one catch. You can't use a normal controller. You're stuck with fleeing the Joy-Con at the TV and using it like Wiimote. And while that does add immersion to the Pokemon catching experience, it gets tiresome after a while and due to how technically inferior these things are compared to the Wiimote, it makes for some pretty inaccurate Pokemon Pokeball throwing. Much like a certain blue tank engine, this game received some streamlining as the game feels snappy and to the point and features things like accessing your Pokemon box from the party screen, or continuing the tradition of not having HMs in a modern Pokemon game. Pokemon catching is simple to do and understand, the difficulty was also changed to the point of being a baby's first Pokemon game, and the first real challenge doesn't really come in until you have to fight Mewtwo, which brings me to my next point. Libertarianism! Pokemon Let's Go is the most libertarian right Pokemon experience on the market. It's all because trainer and gym battles are finite and that you'll mostly grind by catching Pokemon. But that means having to use Pokeballs, which means you'll have to go buy them in a store. During my first playthrough, I ended up in a loop where I had to defeat the Elite Four to get more money to buy Pokeballs, which I then used in Cerulean Cave to catch Chanseys to level up my Pokemon, only to run out and have to grind for more cash. Most people think that easy difficulty in the plastic 3D models and the grid-based, tile-placed level design is the worst part, but no one has made an issue of this ridiculous level grinding system. It makes Pokemon practically a pay-to-win, and kudos to the Baka who maxed out their wallet in this game because it's impossible with you needing to spend in order to get healing items and Pokeballs. There are also no held items or abilities in this game to help you out in your quest to best Kanto's free market economy. Then there's the issue that there's basically no post-game content, like, yeah, there's some extra tough trainers in Mewtwo, but that's basically it. This game had its ass handed to it by a couple of GBA games. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green had the Sevi Islands and the National Decks, as well as Roaming Legendaries and the Battle Tower. The GBA remakes had more going for it than this streamlined, cut-down HD remake. But despite it all, it's still fun, it's still a good game, just prepare to to burn through its content like a mofo and be prepared to run out of things to do. This is a good game. It's a fun game, but it's famous for content and for things to actually do within this game. However, this game's lack of content will become a warn warning, or at least was a warning in hindsight, for what was to come for the Pokemon franchise. But that is for a review for a later time. 
This has been Pickle Hall Gaming, home of the angry video Hollenzoller nerd, and thank you and good tidings.